And during that brief interlude, myself and our upcoming guest, uh, Chris Johnson, have just been showing off our macro collections with each other. Not only do I have my official Mr. Tardis branded macro mug, uh, which I'm drinking coffee from, but I have two copies of the Macro Terra on Blu-ray. I have the Steelbook and, and the original Blu-ray release. What have you got, Chris? Well, there's there's no such thing as macro. What are you talking about? So, so yeah, you, you own zero. <laughs> I just got the one. I just got. I just got the bog standard it's, DVD release. It's not even yeah. high def. It's not. It's not. It's not even open. Now it is. Oh no! <laughs> Leaf is falling out. I put them back in. Now you've. <laughs> you do realize now. if if it's if you try and resell this on now, you have video proof that you that it's not unopened. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I've ruined it for everyone. And this was, believe it or not, not the DVD. This was the only surviving on-tape copy of the Macro Terror. I just happened to store it in this DVD case. <laughs> now I've exposed it to light. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. This this is exactly what happened with Fury from the Deep. So, Chris, anyway, how are you doing this evening? How are you doing? I, do you know what? I'm, um, I'm, I'm not too shabby. I've, I've spent most of my day editing, so I thought I'd take a lovely break away from these monitors uh, by sitting here by these monitors and yeah. talking to you this is the different <laughs> monitors but yeah. so from, from here to there <laughs> so people in the chat are very happy to see you uh yonko uh but for those in the chat who or, or those who are watching uh, after this goes live if you could introduce yourself and also uh your relation with cbbc which has uh, undergone some uh, news this past week yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, my name is Chris Johnson. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm a scriptwriter, clown for hire, actor, Twitch streamer man. Um, I was in the second time team in Doctor Who magazine. Do you remember that? That was a thing for about four years. And uh, I, once upon a time, was a presenter of continuity for the CBBC channel back during its CBBC office and early CBBC HQ incarnations. I also wrote links for the channel and uh, produced shows like Whoops, I Missed the Bus and voiceover for things like that, a Dennis the Menace animated series and loads of other stuff. Uh, so I am ingratiated in the world of that channel enough that this week's news was a bit of a blow. Yeah, and also I don't know if you if you need any disclaimers because I I'm quite politically outspoken on my channel. Uh, our opinions mm. are our own, of course, and what I of say course. what I say does not necessarily represent what Chris says, and vice versa. But Chris is rarely controversial; he's quite a wholesome individual. Oh, bless you! But Aww. but but uh, yeah. For the, so for those of you who uh, are out of the loop, we did have an announcement last week coming from Tim Davy, who's the director general of the BBC, announcing that CBBC, which is the uh, child uh, the child friendly broad uh, broadcast channel arm of the BBC, which is roughly for ages like eight till thirteen, roughly. Yeah, true. When I was there, it was six to. Th- 14 but in recent years i believe it switched to 6 to 12 as, as the demographic yes and also bbc4 which has mainly become a bit of an archival documentary channel as well but there, there were still some shows where some documentary series which make their start on bbc4 and then get quote promoted or moved to bbc2 and others but it also uh, announced uh, radio 4 extra moving to bbc sound however this is not strictly speaking the end of cbbc and bbc4 they're going to be over the coming years, they're going to be merging with the iPlayer to become an online-only format, similar to what BBC Three did. Then that came back. Uh, so these are meant to be cost-cutting measures. Uh, the corporation, according to the BBC News website, uh, currently has two different news networks as well. Uh, changes announced on Thursday would mean cuts of two hundred million a year and the reorganisation of services which prioritise digital platforms. B- uh, CBBC, BBC Four will stay on linear TV and Radio 4 Extra will stay on the radio airwaves for at least three years. So this is not going to be an overnight thing. Uh, this is cost cutting in order to not pass on any cost of living uh, expenses further onto the license fee payers, which I think on paper is a smart move in the short term. But we also understand that this is not just happening to CBBC and BBC Four. This has been kind of like a years long process at the BBC. Uh, Chris, what was your initial reaction when this news broke a couple of days ago? So my f- my first thought was, you always go to what you know. My very first thought was, oh, I hope everybody at Bridge House and the studios were made aware of this news before the news was broken publicly. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, as you know, within our industry, sometimes things are announced and then the people involved are told, uh, which is 
various reasons why that happens sometimes in a rather crass way like andrew lloyd webber with the whole cinderella debacle from a few weeks ago or in television usually because it's gone through many layers sometimes someone forgets to mention it to like floor two of five floors and <laughs> you know they find out that way so that was my first thought uh because the people who work on the live output in particular for cbbc uh work so hard at what they do uh, for those who don't know cbbc continuity between the shows usually person maybe person and puppet telling you what time tracy beak is on it's been like that since the dawn of time um and it's only the only channel really that does that now mm. uh in that way especially with the amount of it being live it's a studio with presenters floor manager maybe a props team sometimes a vision op on camera and then a gallery with a vision operative, sound operative, light operative, a producer, AP, a researcher. A lot of people working very hard to bring you an SNL's worth of entertainment every afternoon. Which is why whenever I see people reading from cue cards, obviously on SNL, I'm like, dudes, we used to do like five page scripts in 10 minutes. Learn them, get them out there, be professional and move on to another one. Um, anyway, a little tangent. Um, <laughs> not, that I'm, not that I'm annoyed. Uh, but yeah, they now have to... In three years, mind, there's plenty of time, we'll have to find something similar to that job. And that's not even mentioning the presenters, puppeteers, the on-screen talent as well. That's already like a battle that they're going to have to look into in the future. But my second thought, the thing that came to mind immediately after, hope my mates are all right, was lower income families are about to find a new challenge in this format, potentially. Because CBBC is one of the few places that's free from advertising that comes under certain standards and practices that you know if you have to stick your kid in front of the telly for an hour they're going to be safe with that channel mm. they are going to be protected with that channel and that content is not going to pander advertise brainwash for lack of a less elegant term you know it's not going to do that it is going to be wholesome educational entertaining Something that was quoted in 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 the the the, the melee of, of all the stuff that came out about this the other day was that people are moving on to I believe Tim Davy pointed this out people are moving on to more streaming services anyway so this is just another version of that format and to a degree sure I agree with that but the license fee might be the only like luxury in terms of entertainment aside from broadband internet 4G or what have you that a family can afford so mm -hmm. having that channel there to watch when it's on with no extra cost and having it be on all the time in a variety of programs is a huge boon to a family that can't turn around to their kid and go, all right, fine. We're going to pay for Disney plus and Netflix now, or maybe they're using the internet at like, you know, local library or a gateway center or something like that. And it's going to cost 4g now to keep the kid entertained. It's, it's that stuff was the second thing that came to mind and made me go, I really hope that they have a plan to keep a terrestrial version of this stuff available um either in program slots on bbc one or bbc two uh so that lower income families don't have to struggle with this stuff because like you know what the streamer service me me models become it's death of a thousand cuts like yeah. in our household we sort of passed it out it's like i pay for two my wife pays for the other two um every now and again we go should we drop that one we're not watching anything on it now and we'll drop it for a bit but you know but we don't have a six to 12 year old in the house kind of demanding those distractions. So, yeah, I, the, the argument that I like to use when it comes to talking about the BBC is almost like akin to a library. Like, like for, I don't use a library, but I'm still happy to pay my tax so that other people can use the library and its services. But also, even if I did use a library, I'm not going in the kids section, at least not with like, not since the court order, but the, when it comes to the, um, I, I'm happy that there is a kids section in the corner that I'm never going to use, but I've contributed to the funding of it, if that makes exactly. sense. Yeah. One of the reasons why I, I'm very um, pro-license fee, there are definitely issues with it. There should be new methods developed for people um, to cut off, people who want to cut off from it to do so safely without worry of like tripping into it, having to deal with any financial consequences or things like that. Like they, we're, we're in an age where most TVs are either smart TVs or the free view can set things up in staggered categories surely there's a way to make it so it's easier to disengage from it should you wish but even if i don't watch which i don't a lot of live tv i'm happy to pay that license fee just for cbb's alone hmm. never mind radio services the regional radio in particular um you know that it definitely has its flaws but like bbc news as a service 
is something that we ultimately can benefit from. So, you know, despite things that need to be seen about it and, and you know, we all, yeah. we all know exactly what I'm referring to and what yeah. everybody gets. Yeah, put it this way. They seem to be doing a good job because they're angering the left and the right at the same time. <laughs> I'd say that makes them pretty down the middle. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, like I, I, I agree with you. It's it's to pay for people like in our position, you know, what we what we can earn, what we can put aside, knowing that like, yeah, that three, four quid or whatever in this portion of time is going to pay for stuff that other people's kids can use, that the elderly can use, that people who are not connected to the internet can use. Like, I don't, I don't mind that. Mm. Like, I don't mind yeah. that at all. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I also think there's value to CBBS and CBBC. Like, I, I think mm. CBBS is is untouchable at this point, but th yes. I, I also no, thought, yeah. No mention of that. I know there's been a big panic from people, but there's been no mention of CBBS being touched. Part of that will be down to any deals it has with BBC Studios as well, because it mm. is a is a bigger brand than the channel itself. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, but... It's the top gear of kids' entertainment. <laughs> For some reason, it's, it's apparently a big merchandising bonanza, yeah. but also it's a channel and people watch it but um, yeah yeah because yeah. uh, I, I think there's value to those channels uh center to, to the youths of today that to have them on a on an actual tv where parents can't like i don't want to do a whole think of the children because that is a cliche and i've called that out myself but you know being able to walk into a room and you know what your kids are watching rather than mm -hmm. huddled around a personal screen like a laptop like you, youtube is terrible for their kids content you know spider-man frozen stuff even youtube kids is yeah, susceptible to that yeah um cbc uh uh, uh d what we call when you've left something alumni that's the one cbc alumni ed petrie and myself talked to quite a few people at the end of 2017 2018 whenever it was uh when there was a lot of coverage around the logan paul forest video that mm. infamous incident because some of that video that, that that content got through to youtube kids and it's like how mm. how is this sort of so again it's that safety avenue but also the mental health aspect too. Um, there's a, there's something to be said about the routine of knowing that like the new programming blocks are on at certain times of the day, in the morning or in the afternoon between like four and six, that is a comfort and a, and a and respite to someone who has just spent their entire day at school, mm. dealing with all of school, dealing with stuff that the school does not organize, but happens, things like bullying or stress that they're dealing with on their own based on family, like, like it, it's a mental health check. It's a little moment at the end of the day where for an hour, hour and a half, you put down your bags, you get into your civvies mm -hmm. and you just like watch some new kids TV and enjoy it and relax and take that breather. Um, and and obviously a big part of like the history of that, especially in recent years and, and the, throughout the time I was at CBBC doing the CBBC office stuff with Hacker and Dodge and, and, and Katie and Ian and everybody uh, were programs like Always oh, Bringing It Back the Sarah Jane Adventures, mm. uh, same team worked on Wizards versus Aliens. Shows like that are a big part of getting the family together, sat on the couch yeah. and watching programs together as well, which you can't guarantee if little Timmy, because that's the go-to example name when you're talking about a kid <laughs> in an example, um, is just watching program on their iPad. Uh, it's not, mm. you're not going to have that conversation. You're not going to have that togetherness. Now, obviously that's, there'll be families attentive enough to realize that that change is going to happen. Mm. And they'll be like, no, we'll make a thing of we'll all sit down and we'll all watch them together and, and whatnot. But it's um, news round was a great example of, of why I worry about that a little bit. News round was scaled back a lot in the last year. Um, mm. I don't know how, how hands on Tim Davey was with that decision, but I know he, he gave it like the, yes, we're going to try this now. And news round went back to one bulletin a day, which was in the morning. And I think now, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but I think now um, Newsround isn't on the channel at all. It's web only. But there's a bulletin that goes out on the site. Um, after Ricky Boletto of Newsround broke the news first about the channels, CBBC and BBC4 uh, and, and Radio 4 Extra the other day, um, teachers were joining in in the comments to talk about how like the class get together after like first period and watch the Newsround bulletin <clears throat> because the teachers are like, this is important. We need to make sure that all the kids have access to this thing and watch it each day. Um, so, yeah, it's an odd one. I have to stress, though, and as you pointed out before, it's not going away mm. for three years. And even then, we don't know yet what the next form of it is. Um, it could be something that works economically, financially for people. Um, 
or it could be a complete disaster. <laughs> like, it could yeah. be either. We don't know. But I, I think a little bit of everybody was like, oh, not the broom cupboard. Yeah. Because what's where's that going to be now where's going to be live saturday morning tv you know yeah. certain things are about to enter a whole new realm of either evolving and thriving or yeah. disappearing completely. yeah like my first like my immediate thought is to maybe play a bit of devil's advocate like if if the bbc think that they've got the data and the numbers because they'll know more in depth then than either of us too like the actual yeah, metrics yeah. and the numbers but the, maybe that this is definitely the right decision but i do think there's a sort there's like a certain uh principle to a channel like cbbc where they're able to because when you look at like child-friendly content on like disney plus and other streaming services you they often have much bigger budgets and it's more spectacle and stuff like that but you you wouldn't get like a show like Tracy Beaker or Four O'Clock Club or something which is much more grounded on another streaming service because CBBC has to kind of be creative with its setting and be more grounded to speak to to, to speak to the age demographic. And also so many talented writers and directors and actors made their start on channels like CBBC or with that age demographic, like Russell T. Davis. Um, like that's that's where he made his start. And it's I think it's the opposite of leveling up to make the the uh, the the birthing ground for great creative talent make it harder to access and corner it off into its own online thing where it might not get as much attention. BBC Three, prime example. Mm. As soon as it went completely online into to iPlayer, uh, the rate of commission slowed down drastically. Again, that was a cost thing, but we just sort of come out of this period where shows like People Just Do Nothing, um, Uncle, like there was this really big boom of like brilliant original comedy and, and drama content on bbc3 and and then it kind of stopped mm. and there was still good stuff some shows survived the iplayer only kind of uh, atmosphere that it switched like this country for example yeah like people know about that show and that was of that era like that was when it thrived so it is possible that we're still going to see content and again devil's advocate i hope that we still see content that retains that level of respect for the audience and whatnot. And also just to sound pretentious, um, that magic of it mm. all, because there's sort of a, there's a spark to that kind of entertainment, especially when you're that age, the chat, I'm pretty sure I guarantee someone will have said this in the chat at some point. Oh, CBBC is not as good now as when I was a kid. Yeah. Cause you're not a kid anymore <laughs> yeah. because when you were the age to watch it and it was aimed at you, it had that spark that grabbed you and that spark's still there, but it's just grabbing the people who are like eight to 12 now, like that's who it's appealing to. And I hope that, I hope that that attention to detail and that love and care. And I mean, you've been on sets for these shows. You've worked on these shows, you know, like how much love goes into them to get them made. Yeah. Like, I hope that isn't lost or similarly isn't kind of supported still in its new life. Because I can imagine it being, right, we're going to strip down now. We're only going to commission, say we commission 10 new series a year in-house. We're only going to commission three. Okay, sure. Are we going to give them all of our time and attention? No, because now we're going to focus on numbers or we're going to focus on, you know, like where we can save money elsewhere. You just get on with that. It's, yeah, I, I, I want it to, I want it to be, I want it to be a change that makes us all go when it happens. Right. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah, there's definitely still stuff that needs to be made clear or ironed out. Because, um, yeah. Oh, it's all melancholy. I don't it, like it. No. It's weird, isn't it? Well, like, because well, <laughs> like, well, me, me and you, we're, we're a similar age. What, well, like, because like, when I think of uh, CBBC, seventy three. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stuff like The Raven, uh, like oh. those intense game shows that probably for the best would never be made now because i don't think those kids have ever been seen again i think they're still left in the forest somewhere those portals were real back when the bbc had a budget the bu the budget dried up and now the portals won't open again but yeah the, the stuff like that now, and of course to tracy be fair, to be fair raven did reboot a few years ago but i think they did it like a few cities over so that everyone would be distracted and not look for the bodies in the other forest <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, no, you're right. Like that, that kind of that stuff that is what I love to call it, like '80s kid film vibe. 
you, you know, like the kids' films that sort of over the last 10, 20 years have been very DreamWorksy. It's been very like, oh, faux edgy and oh, it's <laughs> wacky or Madagascar style. We're just shouting things at you. Yeah. Um, but then like 80s kids' films were like Return to Oz and The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, <laughs> the stuff that leaves children watching the movie and then the parents turn to them and going, what do you think of that? And they're just like, <laughs> and, and but you know it, it's not it's entertainment that's not frightened of, of challenging them and and, and you know it, it respects them mm. you mentioned how russell t davis came up through children's bbc uh oh he's doing a plug i've got a podcast called out of the broom cupboard um which is on spotify apple podcast um i interviewed russell t davis for currently the last episode on the playlist is the one with russell there's a few more episodes in production right now with other people mm. um but i interviewed russell about like his career in kids tv and how it sort of got its start there and he was very of that mind as uh, as well of like th there is a stereotype when it comes to creating entertainment for families and specifically kids that you should talk down to the kids and hold their hand you don't have to mm. they are so savvy like yeah. they they know so much they're on they're on a level of like awareness that you as you get older forget you had <clears throat> for some reason <laughs> you know it's like it's yeah, like yeah like some kind of weird uh, reverse meta version of boss baby logic it's just like you know they they know they know they get it you don't have to break it down for them in a way that is so simplistic you just have to give them that reach and go there you go and a kid will watch it and if they've got a question they'll turn around to parents guardians you know siblings and they'll fill them in and move on uh i just i hope that sticks around yeah because uh, which which ones of you which cbbc ones have you worked on you've you done you've done four o'clock club right oh uh, yeah four o'clock club uh creeped yeah. out um oh yeah there's more but i'm blanking unfortunately uh <laughs> because we saw him in harry harry in the chat the kids in trapped are still in that goddamn tower which i think yeah. is absolutely true um yeah, yeah. wily sneak never let him out never found a way <laughs> Except, yeah. i mean th th they played to win everyone right it was for keeps um, oh uh, trapped but yeah, we'll let you out eventually. <laughs> WG fan also uh, talked about Bamzuki, which I watched as well. Uh, I made so many creatures on Bamzuki as a kid. Uh, I really, really wanted to be on that show, but it never happened, sadly. <laughs> but uh, at least I didn't, I didn't get locked in a tower. I'll, I'll pitch an iPlayer only version. We'll yes. make it work. It'll just be you and me. No one else will see it. It'll just be you and me in a room. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll realize we're actually in the trapped tower and be like, oh no! And oh, it's then... layers on top of layers. Twist. yeah <laughs> but no because uh, yeah i'm not to go like more like morbid again but i i'm just really worried that um with this and also one way people were able to get into the industry was through local tv that's kind of being mm. shut like shuttered now depending on your region like most of the local tv stations have just gone because they just couldn't afford to carry on anymore but along with like cbbc uh like what i'm just worried that it's going to make the industry much more insular and yeah. much more reliant on nepotism which considering how quickly the industry is supposedly growing and how much is being filmed and made here you do need a uh you, you do need some sort of like mechanism in place to get people trained up and like equipped for these big shows i'm not saying that cbbc means that it should just be a testing ground like people still work oh, really yeah. hard and it's, yeah. it's it's on screen but that's it's a it's a safe environment to you know learn and cut your teeth and make mistakes because like you know it's it's i'm not saying you don't try i i hope you get what i mean though how dare you say that I just turned up to work and chatted to a bloke's wrist disguised like, as a uh, dog? Yeah, you, you it, guess, was, it was art. It was Shakespeare, damn it. You, you've got a hacker <laughs> in one hand, a cigar at the other, saying, it's just kids, they'll never know. He gets chomping the cigar. Oh, don't. I know, I know you're just like joking for the metaphor there, the tableau, but the amount of people that have turned to me and like Ian Sterling over the years and gone, so how do you do the dog while you're talking? How long do you think her arm is? <laughs> like, he's over there. Um, <laughs> um, so real quick one uh, this, uh, DXCTR Master in the chat that episode of Creeped Out where the boy turns into a troll that was done by Davy Jones who did special effects on Doctor Who who did wow, the Slitheen he assisted Neil Gorton and he's a friend segue, segue, there, there it go. is Yes, um, but yeah, uh, Children's BBC um, Sport as well uh, BBC Education Department like these aren't, oh they're at the bottom of the ladder but they are great places where you can learn and absorb in the environment, whether yeah. it be, you know, work scheduling, uh, assistant uh, producer, whether you're, you know, producer, writer, researcher, whatever role it is you take. Uh, production coordinators, like, oh my gosh, production coordinators cut their teeth 
yeah like so expertly working for those departments because like the amount of stuff you have to juggle and 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 figure it out once if if you can manage a week of organizing three bedtime story shoots five or six scripts and mm-hmm. like which makeup artist has dropped out so we've got to get them and all this stuff for cbb's you can take on anything yeah <laughs> like you are ready to take on the world um so yeah the the the, the sort of the slowdown in production of the amount of stuff that cbbc bbc4 uh, uh and you know regional radio as well but Spe- i mean especially regional radio that's where so many people like learn their, their, their trade within radio and, and audio broadcasting that being said i noticed that a lot of the radio stuff is migrating to bbc sounds mm. um which based on and again we'd have to see the figures but like based on how people are, are you know imbibing their radio mm. might not affect it too much negatively it may actually help it you know increase um because if suddenly their push for it publicly is tune into you know like i don't know if this station is building like a bbc radio hertfordshire on bbc sounds mm. then the amount of people might go oh i could just listen to it on the way to work yeah Give me headphones like that might you know that might be the incentive that gets people back into re- regional radio a little bit more um who knows we yeah. need to speculate <laughs> it's like cause I, i've got um some episodes of like desert island discs downloaded on bbc sounds but I, i've got quite a few episodes but I, I have no idea what time or day it's on like I, I like there's so many like radio shows that I miss because I've no idea when they're on, what channel they're on, what bro- what frequency they're on. But I can just download them on my phone. I think radio is a good, especially with like um, so many people using like with with um, the the. Uh, sorry, I'm just very tired. I got back to the UK recently. <laughs> I'm still jet lagged. Um, You're yeah. still in France. Your mind is in France and your heart is on the channel. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, I'm 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 part of the time lash now. So. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. When it comes, uh, yeah, with the uh, like mainstreaming of like f- like phones and smart devices and stuff, where you're able to just easily find it, and like I think the BBC's done a great job at archiving it and cataloging it. As- same for the iPlayer as well. I think that's a shift that works. But things like like BBC Three go like going online for several years and then coming back with only Stacey Dooley and RuPaul's Drag Race to carry it, like no disrespect to those shows, but no, it's, it's... of course, but I agree. It was it wasn't the relaunch that it needed yeah, to it, be a, to make waves. It was it, like oh okay, yeah, All right. it, it needed like a drama ready to go. It needed like a, a talk show or something. But it yeah, came back with stuff that it was already offering as an online only service. Yeah, it, it there was no you know like now that could have worked if maybe you like you said it was a variety of stuff from the get-go and it was like hey people who haven't bothered to check out iplayer here's that new sound you've been looking for you yeah. know and just like hit them with a full-on schedule it's your cousin marvin marvin iplayer <laughs> you know that content you've been looking for you know like that that might have it's about time travel it, it counts on mr yeah, tardis's yeah. channel of course, of course. um <laughs> it you know it, if they'd have done that then the relaunch would have been successful again brand new stuff if they'd hit with like a brand new drama series especially bbc3 like live off that nostalgia be like from the people who brought you being human you know mm. what I mean? Like, like go into that like level of you know. Toby Whithouse, do you want to do a, a new BBC Three drama? Is the budget three episode? You're up for it, great. Um, the amount of times over the last ten years with the BBC comedy accounts on social media, we're just posting stuff from like early to mid two thousands BBC Three comedy shows. Mm. It made you realise, well, hang on, why aren't you just repeating these? Why aren't you getting some airtime for them? Like, bring yeah. people back with like a mighty Bush marathon. You know what I mean? Like. No, th- I guarantee that 90% of the viewing public in the UK right now have no idea what Titty Titty Bang Bang is. It wasn't fantastic, but if you put it on, people will be like, this is new. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it's a bit, of a bit of a draw, at least, of like, I've not seen this before. This is brand new. You know, do a flea bag marathon. Like, do something to, I don't know, kick up a stink. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, and especially, especially in a world where, like, you know, Channel 4 is under a attack from like mm. all around and everything you know uh, th- there's no real anarchic comedy going around so yeah but it, it works as a as a weird comparison to what could become of bbc4 and cbbc um will they just one day go do you know what we'll put it on tv again i think it's more likely that they bring back the bbc1 like afternoon slot for cbbc or something like that yeah um, like have it on between like four o'clock and six o'clock or something yeah. yeah which which i think i think is the only way to do it that would assuage my fears of like lower income families kids mental health like mm. all that stuff is kind of 
at least given a leg up if there is a terrestrial version mm-hmm. of CBBC that could be accessible um, as part of a schedule, as part of a structure. Uh, and, and, you know, they're, they're always going to dabble with stuff that crosses between the two uh, channels and, and like genres as well. I mean, look at Dodger, great example. Like mm. Dodger's now getting its Sunday evening airing on BBC One because they're like, well, of course people would want to see this. It's a prestige drama series based on the work of Dickens. It's got Christopher Eccleston in it as Fagan, like, you know, the only and best Doctor Who. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't at me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, although in our big marathon, me and my wife at the minute, we've just got up to Matt Smith and I'd forgotten how good of an actor he is. Mm. My God, he is amazing. Please just make a second Morbius, but don't have Jared Leto in it and just have Matt Smith be in it. Just let him have a film where he's just dancing. Just so give me that. Matt Smith uh, is Fagan in Dodger series too. Yeah. yeah well, hang on. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only if Chris Eccleston leaves, but they don't write a crap statement that isn't true that angers him. <laughs> <laughs> like as long as, as, long yeah. as it's completely amicable. He's, he's from Salford. You don't do that to him twice. Do not do that to. Oh my right. So in case the chat can't tell from my slightly watered down accent, I'm a Salford boy. When he said that in that panel, I'm from Salford. You don't do that. Yeah. I was just sat there. Like, Go on, son. So <laughs> proud of you. So proud of you, lad. So, oh, I feel my. like I appropriate Manchester culture because I lived in Lincolnshire for the first twenty-four years of my life, and then all of a sudden I'm here. Like, oh, I'm I'm from Manny. I'm from uh, <laughs> you know Eccles Cake. Oh, well, I buggered off the last six years to do panto in Lincolnshire. So where were you? <laughs> like we handed a bat on. <laughs> Turns out that I'm just chatting to a mirror. We've never been seen in the same room. There we go. Ex- you go I to Lincoln, so and I move to How- Manchester. How did we do that Five Who fans video? Split screen. It's just yeah. one of us. Duh. It's just one performer. <laughs> How are we overlapping our talks with each other? Just audio wizardry, folks. Same way that I puppeteered Hacker from seven feet away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, A lot of grease. Um, so. <laughs> no wonder it was so expensive to run the channel. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah, poor so line producer. It's like, Chris, do you really need 300 litres of grease? No, you're oh. right, you're right, you're right. 350, 350 litres. Just to be sure, just to be on the safe side, you know. <laughs> CBBC presenters, we never got paid, we just got greased. Uh, and that's going to get misquoted. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, no, I, f- I feel like I keep on bringing the conversation back down every so often. But Never one, 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 for that. Yeah, but one extra thing, because one thing I really noticed when uh, working on uh, CBBC stuff, because I started off as a runner and then uh, became third AD on some projects, uh, which means, for those of you who don't know, you are helping the first assistant director who assists the director, and you're also directing the background. You're directing the supporting artists, the extras. Um, and when you're working with CBBC, there's a lot of kids involved there. They've got chaperones who look after them as well. But sometimes you'll have like 20 or 30 kids. And for four o'clock club, they, that's, that was their summer holiday. They wanted to be on set and learn and act. And, and many of them, that, that was the first time they'd done any acting. And many of them not did it not to become actors, but to gain confidence and find themselves and get out there more. And I thought that was really, really great. And I think with stuff like this and the like erosion of... Uh, other avenues for talent to break into the industry or for people just to be creative generally uh, that it just feels like it's sad that another is being taken away as well like cbbc is not going anywhere strictly speaking but i think it's a it's, it's a tide shift yeah i it's uh, what's important what's important g- gentle viewer dear viewer come closer please um not that close don't despair about this it's it's sad that something is going to go that we've known and loved for a long time, but we still don't know what is its next evolution. We don't know what the next stage is yet. It might surprise us, and I hope it does. Um, and I hope it does it while thinking of the people who watch it, because that's the important thing to me. It, it's it's that the people who watch it are, are front and center of why they're making the decision and what they're going to do with it. Uh, and secondly, I just hope they look after all the people that work on the in-house output and everything and make sure that they you know get a nice bridge to something new or or a new form of role that they can excel in um because hmm. otherwise we're gonna see hacker the dog walking down the road with a bindle hmm. like trying to hitchhike to get back to wigan because he can't afford the tram anymore and he can't get any cars because he's not even got a thumb yeah so like, all you just sort of waving. he just sort of shoves his face out onto the road and has to hopefully retract it before the bus comes along 
pretty much you yeah. know yeah just like it's, just, it's just suspiciously part of his cheek sticks out a little more <laughs> into the road meanwhile dodge is like sat back at cbb's like swimming through cash not even offering him a lift <laughs> you mean you know? greece yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when it comes to things like cbbc and we one of those things that we don't know that we'll miss until it's gone or it's changed or it's not quite as accessible especially during lockdowns there was like the bite size presentations that they did yeah. which uh, i believe you were you were involved in a couple of those yeah i i over the course of uh the last three years yeah uh, did about like seven or eight in 2020 i did three or four in 2021 i've done about um 12 this year actually yeah uh, that stuff we don't know for sure where it's going to go. But what's interesting about BBC Bite Size and BBC Learning is it was already an online only thing with packages and 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 um, activity sort of packs and everything sent to schools. Uh, over the course of the lockdowns in 2020, they readjusted the whole thing into being programming blocks that would go out on the CBBC channel, so that Key Stage Two, a Key Stage One, some Key Stage Three. Um, stuff would be covered by bbc bite size as sort of an alternative way to revise and keep on top of those things while everything was uncertain and then since they've kept it around it's been a programming block on the channel uh, usually just after school time starts so it's one of those where like if you're off ill you can get some lessons in mm. um and of course it's all available on iplayer as well so those resources were i mean the amount of good they did in in those you know especially those first two years of the pandemic it was incalculable how much that helped like the amount of contact we had from teachers even just the, even just the daft presenters like us who showed up to say the words would get like missives from teachers who were just going thank you so much for that because mm. like i watched through it it covered this that and the other i was able to give that to the class get them to come back after like two hours onto zoom like make sure they'd taken it all in like it just helped so so much and i could focus on mm. you know individual kids and talking to them about like this that and the other and it was like okay this works um hmm. i imagine that will probably find a new programming block in some form whatever happens going forward maybe it'll go back to when we were kids and it was it was like those programs that were on at like two three in the morning on bbc2 yeah that the teachers would tape and then bring in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just bring them in it'll probably go back to something like that in terms of its broadcast or maybe you know bbc one or bbc two will go yeah we'll put the educational stuff on 11 while 12 on a weekday and kids are at home then it's a way to keep on top of stuff yeah um, you've, you've got some people in the chat saying like what about citv and that's, that's not to say citv don't do good work but you, you don't you don't get stuff like that with a uh, a, com a commercial broadcaster like you'll get your mr bean mr magoo thunderbirds and hotel transylvania in the morning and like that's fine but i think that like, cbbc offers something a little bit more like different and maybe more keyed in uh to the demographic rather than just imports yeah, I, there's there's definitely like a benefit to acquisitions and animation and things like that. I mean, I'm a cartoon obsessive, so. Well, you are a like, you are a cartoon. I, I am a, I I am a cartoon. I've I've been a cartoon. Uh, I eat cartoons. This morning, I, I laid several out on a sacrificial table, ones that hadn't been used for years, and I just I just hacked them up and ate them, um, just to keep up being a cartoon internally. You understand? <laughs> I mean, no one no one is going to miss Bonkers, so I've eaten him. Uh, yep, don't, even, don't even know who bonkers is that's a net good exactly exactly angry beavers are next no one's talked about them in a decade i'm having them for tea um so <laughs> have you ever had a cat dog hot dog it's amazing um so there's younger viewers in the chat right now going i have no idea what any of this is i don't know what this is um this is what happens when somebody who didn't have cable as a kid got it for one year and just watched a load of cartoon network <laughs> uh, that's what that is my, my point of reference is begin and end at cow and chicken uh so the show not the animal but i did eat the cartoon version <laughs> um yeah acquisitions acquisitions are important for variety and flavor they absolutely are um i remember this is this is telling tales out of school but it's not gonna get anyone in trouble um uh, CBBC years ago, the acquisitions head at that time, wonderful person called Sarah Muller. I think she's currently the channel controller. Um, uh, she's part of the reason why I got Dennis the Menace because she pushed for me to audition for it when I had a busy schedule. She was like, nope, come over here. I'm going to make sure we get you to the studio to audition. And I was like, okay, am I going to get in trouble? She was like, I don't care. I'll talk to your producer. And I was like, okay. 
Um, and I'm glad she did because I ended up doing one of my favorite jobs I've ever done. But um, uh, Sarah Muller was trying to get hold of Adventure Time for CBBC because there wasn't much animation on CBBC at that time. And she just was like, this is brilliant. Like, this show is amazing and I'm, I'm trying to get it, but I'm not getting much support from upstairs. And in that moment where basically she was turned around trying to have that conversation, CITV got the winning bid. Um, so it was always a point of like, ah, missed out on Jake the dog and Finn the human. How will the fun never end now? <laughs> um, so yeah, there was, there was all that sort of stuff. CITV is, CITV is great and CITV mm. has been great and it has one hell of a legacy. But being a commercial channel, there is that extra level of you can't just put your kid in front of it for an hour, half an hour. Like, because it's, you know, no no parent just shoves the kid in front of the telly and leaves them if they're a caring parent. They shove their kid in front of the telly knowing what the kid's about to watch. Yeah. And then they turn away. But you have those moments. Maybe you need to sort tea out. Maybe, like, they've come home and the uniform's absolutely ruined and you need to get it in the wash ASAP. You just need that bit of reprieve. You can put the kid in front of the TV knowing that CBBC is not going to tell them to tell you to buy this video game, buy this app, buy this Lego set, buy this action figure. But do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not going to tell you to do that in the gaps between the shows. Um, CITV is wonderful and a lot of wonderful people work on it, but that safety net's not there. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't mistake our lack of mentioning CITV as a disdain for it, gentle no. viewer. <laughs> Just know that we're sick of our young relatives telling us that they want My Little Pony all <laughs> yeah. day. No, and I also would be curious what the higher ups at CITV do make of this decision. Do, do you think that they would like this is high, this is a, a a rhetorical question? Do do you think that they would follow? Like, do they think, oh, now we have less competition? What does what do we do now? Like these, like it's a knock on effect to the market when your biggest competitor has a big shift like this oh for sure i mean i mean the, the amount of those channels that no longer broadcast in the uk or, or are now just kind of like a repeat generator and don't really make original programming or cater it as much like i know nickelodeon kind of has a slightly um arm's length approach with the uk output it's just kind of like yeah put the stuff on and there it is it's over there mm -hmm. and there's some originals content and, and and whatnot but you know they're not they're not like they were say 15 years ago where they were making live saturday morning shows aimed at uk kids and things like that i mean ed petrie got his start in a, um, a nickelodeon show that was on live saturday mornings and stuff that's where he began before he moved to cbbc and, and joined a talking cactus and and i'm pretty sure that actually happened and it wasn't just a, a medicinal dream but the point is um you know at citv have a chance now to really ramp up and go right put the money in we're going to create like the next big drama for family mm. audiences. We're going to create the next big sci-fi show for family audiences. Like they have a chance to do that now. And I do, I do wonder if they will or whether or not the lack of competition means they're just like, oh, we'll just stay as we are. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Mm. People yeah. Can tune in. It was. Yeah. We're not, we might not see um, the, uh, the, the Mary Jan Chronicles or something, which is just starring Mizimuth Raiden or something. As a journalist yeah. across the road at Snanaman Road. With their talking robot ferret, Bez. Um, so <laughs> BBB! <laughs> Shakes fist. Meanwhile, in the gaps, you'll be advertised a load of action figures, which is wrong, says the man sat in front of a load of action figures. Um, <laughs> but, but, so... um, Philip Hawkins in the chat uh, saying, oh my god, my seven-year-old daughter has gotten into ninja kids on YouTube, and if you think CITV pushes too many toys, that YouTube channel is ridiculous. I, is I... ninja kids one of those where it's like, uh, they've made merch for the channel, or is it one where they're just advertising toys at you because they're being gifted a load of toys? Because Probably... that whole genre it's probably weird. both probably both but i think this is why we need that alternative with something like uh like cbbc like, i i think we we should not lose that ground to the online unregulated yeah. spaces yeah it's it's i mean <laughs> the spider-man and elsa chronicles um <laughs> good lord yeah it, it's it i think cbbc offers a a oh, philip says it's both sorry oh it's both oh no ah it's oh the Jake Paulification of children's YouTube. It's terrifying. Yeah, so, um, sorry to cut you off. Sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, CBBC offers that like it's that safe ground. You know what you're dealing with, and when you've got like creators who who worked on shows like, and I'm I guarantee the chat will have just brought these up at some point. Shows like um, you know the stuff that sort of for the younger ages and above things like the Dumping Ground, Story of Tracy Beaker, Four O'clock Club, uh, so awkward shows like that, and then you've got the stuff that sort of 
aims at the slightly older end of the spectrum, things like Wolf Blood, the Young Dracula reboot, you know, uh, Nowhere Boys, um, uh, the Spartacle Mystery, like these shows that you know that you're going to get quality writers and, and directors like honing their craft or giving a passion project they've always wanted to to do um and and that that quality will show in the work and you don't have to worry about sticking your kid in front of something and going why is spider-man pregnant and elsa's jabbing him with an inflatable <laughs> eagle i don't understand this why is this a thing uh, but, but, what, what, is, what is a maverick and why it why is it every day bro i don't get this <laughs> but, but while you were listing off uh, all those shows though i was thinking like so many of those are made outside of london and mm, uh, yeah. a company with this um like bbc news article about it they were talking about uh some things that nadine doris has recently said uh, mm. asking uh to ensure that bbc uh 50 percent of radio and 60 percent of tv production uh spend is outside of london by the end of 2027 which i agree that we shouldn't be as london centric and i agree yeah, with that oh, yeah. absolutely but so much of children's tv is not made in london anyway like yes, it's uh, northeast especially there's a lot of production on the dramas in places like newcastle um bbc scotland put a lot of time into the travel shows and things mm -hmm. like that i worked on a travel show uh called all over the place um i did a few series of that we did some in europe some in asia and and that show was an incredible thing to work on but that was completely out of bbc scotland in glasgow like that mm. was their baby they they made it and and you know if there's not much call now to spend money on an educational travel show for online only then that's a whole department or two at bbc scotland who are like oh what are we i mean what's happening to us are we closing are we being dissolved are we moving to other other parts of like bbc scotland now what's 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 happening what's that sound tell me what's happening yeah. so it's gonna be yeah that that the future of that sort of stuff is very Odd. And then you get to, um, you know, like BBC Studios and, and Bad Wolf. And it's like, we don't know for certain that there are any plans or were plans for a CBBC branch of, of the upcoming um, new era of the R RTD2 for Doctor Who. But chances are that a discussion has been had at the very least of just like, would this be something we're interested in? And it's like, where does that go now? Now, that could be one of the things that saves it viewing figure wise as a platform shift. Um, mm. If they were to go, there's a Doctor Who spinoff and it's coming out on, on iPlayer and it's exclusive to CBC on iPlayer, like people will go, all right, mm. I'm tuning in. Like they'd give it a go. But again, like, what about the kids whose parents haven't used their 4G for them to watch TV? You know, what, yeah. what about the kids who can't get Wi Fi at the library? It's like, one thing is like, yes, this is great for numbers for the service, but it's also like, you're not reaching all your viewers. Yeah, and like, I, no fault I, of their own. And I understand this. We've, there'll be people watching this segment thinking like that's that's a ridiculous like thing to like. Of course, parents have got four G and internet. Like you, you are watching this on a YouTube live stream. Like, we're not talking mm. specifically about you or maybe people that you know, but these yeah. families do exist, and they also deserve entertainment, and they do deserve that escapism. Yeah, I mean, come on, like. You can, you can, as an adult, dear, dear gentle viewer, like go, oh, I've only got a bit of my data left. Like I've burned through 100 gig this month. All right. Do you know what? I'm going to use the last one. I know it refreshes in three days. I'll use a little bit to watch this thing. I'll listen to this podcast on the bus now and then I'll save it. A young kid does not have that same level of attentiveness to figures like that necessarily. Like yeah. based on the age, you, you you give an iPad with 4G or your phone. Like in the case of a lot of these families, it'll just be handing their phone to the kid. Like you hand your phone to the kid with your 4G, 5G on, and they start mm -hmm. burning through stuff on YouTube. The amount of data you're going to rip through by the time you get your phone back. Mm. And also just the, cl the clicking. The cl I'd never even thought about this until just this minute. The clicking, the notion of them just tapping on whatever yeah, and being taken wherever. There's no danger of that if you're able to have like a dedicated place for it on the mm. TV. But there's yeah. nowhere near as danger of them. You're not going to watch the TV and suddenly like have clicked on four or five ads. Yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. So, I don't know. Obviously, iPlayer is not going to have that, but like any other service, it's it's you know, it, the, the 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 benefits of the platforms are different based on the demographic, mm. um, and also so are the the downsides to it. Yeah, you know, as as, as uh, to to paraphrase uh, modern day poet and actual god walking among us, Bo Burnham, um, you know, it did all the things we designed it to do. And that's not always with the right thing in mind for the intended audience. It's for profit or for numbers. So, um, yeah, that safety net of it being a dedicated channel is important. It really is. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, which is why I'm like, keep Tim Davies away from CBeebies, please. Like, tell him it doesn't even exist. Yeah. Just like, tell him it's not a thing. <laughs> like, leave it be. Leave yeah. it. Do you know how many angry parents, babysitters, and grandparents will storm this building yeah. if you touch that channel? My God. Like, well, I, an army of people with Mr. Tumble red noses will show up in the courtyard oddly enough that i think cbb's is one of those it's a it's a broadcast channel that still manages to grab headlines based on who is reading the bedtime stories this week like oh, tom hardy oh. did one uh tom, did, tom harry styles isn't He's harry styles doing one harry styles is doing one yeah yeah, yeah. i think jody um, whittaker might have i, I might have dreamt jo that I'm sure Jody's done one. Uh, Tom Hiddleston. Uh, you've had massive sports names as well. Like big football players have done it. You, you've. It's insane how how culturally bedtime story has like grown to this thing where like <laughs> you know full well that your kid is going to get everything they need from it, and it's going to be a wonderful family time thing to sit down and watch a story. Like a very young kid, wrap up at the end of the day, get them ready for bed. But at the same time, knowing that mum and or dad or you know. <laughs> Whoever the parent guardian or all the sibling watcher with them is just sat there going, Oh, he's fit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? they, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Now, that being said, I'm very angry. I did two bedtime stories and I didn't get any news articles about how fit I was. So I'm fuming at that, if I'm honest. And I even had the teddy bear in mine with a fedora on and a multicolored scarf wrapped around its neck. And that was for you people. And did you write any articles about how sexy I am? No, maybe. I don't know. I don't read the internet. But the point is... Um, there's there's yeah. like 200 people watching this stream right now. I'm sure one of them has a blog. Okay? I'm sure one of you can make that story. You can make that headline retrospectively. I, I bally well hope so. Top five um, hottest uh, bedtime story hosts. Uh, one Chris, two Chris, three Johnson Chris you just fake it you're like you know it's like oh well, obviously it's and i don't know tom hardy and tom hiddleston i think chris evans did one and it's like there you go you know, <laughs> captain america not the other fella um and and then it's like and then chris johnson you've got these parents reading it on buzzfeed going wait what, <laughs> what? Um, I don't jean luca in the chat eve miles has done a bedtime story as well honestly bedtime stuff right so i'm um, tiny tangent will you permit me a tiny tangent I go don't for wanna, it I don't we're, we're stun locked now into bedtime stories <laughs> okay all right a bedtime story oh sugar um i'll grab the nearest book i can find but the nearest uh, book is, is this macro terra booklet in the blu-ray so that's the nearest, my the nearest book is this square enix members slip from the life is strange true colors box so, quick screen capture it <laughs> i'm an exclusive square no hang on uh so <laughs> <laughs> oh, screw Square Enix. Um, that Avengers game was terrible. Point is, um, Bedtime Stories it was like the one time I would like fan out at people um, being in, in the building. Because CBB Studio, the current one, is right next door. Same makeup room, same green room as the CBBC Continuity Studio. Uh, CBBC HQ as it is now. CBBC Office as it was um, back in the day. And... Uh, I, I never really sort of like got overexcited or like really hyper about guests that we had in because you are there to be host and make them feel comfortable and make sure they know what's happening and do the rehearsal as much as they need and not over rehearse if you can feel they're getting too nervous about it. Because you can take an actor who's been on stage and screen a million times. And as soon as you say, so we're going live in two minutes, they're like, oh, oh, right. And you just see the nerves appear. Mm. Like they suddenly get really nervous because being on stage in front of humans makes sense. Being in a studio in front of some tripods with a red light ominously turning on yeah. at the end of a countdown can be really daunting. No audience to play off of or wing yeah. it with. Yeah, and, and like and we're we're fine. We've got like producers in an earpiece and everything, so we can, you know, we know when the cameras are gonna change and all these things and we you know, we're we're there in the driving seat, we're talking to the passengers, letting you guys know where the exits are, it's all fine. <laughs> um so I'd never really get, you know, starstruck in those. Instances. I mean, like one of my first big days at CBBC ever was Karen Gillan's first ever live TV interview. And mm. um, it was one of my favorite days at work ever. It was mental. Like I was in a cage because I was being kept away from her in case I was a danger because I was an obsessive Doctor Who fan was the running gag that I was actually perfectly nice and like, you know, polite. And Ed, the co presenter was like, don't look him in the eyes. Don't look him in the eyes. He'll do a weird trick on you and it'll make you sign <laughs> things like his face. You know, and that, that was the like the runaway joke of it all and by the end of it we're just throwing hot cross buns at each other because it's jesus's holiday um and it was easter 
and uh, and our exec producer was really mad. The only feedback they gave about the whole day was, you shouldn't have thrown the hot cross buns. People might see that as disrespectful. We're like, how was the interview with the big celebrity guest? <laughs> it's like, we're not paying attention to that. <laughs> oh, um, we're going to get letters about that one. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was that was that was their mindset, and we didn't. Of course, we didn't get a single complaint about it. We just got people going. That was really cool. Oh, we've seen a preview of the the new Doctor and the new episode starting tomorrow. But like, you know, I didn't get starstruck at that and stuff when when she came back to film sketches because it's just like, oh, you came back to film some sketches. This is hilarious. And the guests that we'd have, there was a segment on CBC called um, uh, uh, Le Saturday Kitchen that we did at that time, where like we got a different guest in every week, pre-record this sketch of a parody of Saturday Kitchen. Um, and you just, you know, it's one of those you film with them and you'll know this, you'll, you'll have worked with certain actors on shows where you're like, after the fact, you go, oh my God, I can't believe I worked with that person today. That's really cool. <laughs> like you, it's, it's afterwards you go, ooh. But CBB's Bedtime Stories was a different thing because if they film them in studio, we just bump into a celeb in the makeup room. Mm. Like we'd go in to have our makeup done for CBBC live in the afternoon. And just like, there's Simon Pegg. Just in the chair next to you <laughs> and and like that takes you by surprise because mm. they're not your guest you're not looking after them you just have a chat with them while you're both getting your makeup done um that was that that was the first time at work it was like 2012 where i was like oh i'm actually a bit starstruck this is weird hello and we just we just chatted about dark knight rises because we've both seen it the night before like that was the, <laughs> that's what you do um um my favorite my favorite ever one was um ashley jensen scottish actor um she's m most famous for uh, things like extras mm. uh one of the nicest human beings on the planet because she had like a 20 minutes while they were resetting summit in the cbb studio she'd been in the green room watched us doing our live link disappeared we came back sat in the green room because news around we're in studio we share a studio and we're doing this that and the other and she comes in with a tray of like 12 brews <laughs> and she says don't know who takes sugar so i've brought it in we went what are you doing What's, what are you doing? She just went, well, I watched the stuff you guys were doing. It looked, it was very funny, but it's a lot of hard work. So I thought you could all do with a brew. It was oh. like, and you know what it's like? If the runner would have seen it, they would be like, what are you doing? No, no, stop. <laughs> like, stop. <laughs> Insurance. I'm meant to be doing that. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? All those different thoughts. Going well, these brews are great. We can fire that chap. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was just like, that was, stuff like that is lovely. We, we filmed, right, this is, this is so pretentious and first, like first world problem here. Oh, we, were filming at, we were filming at Wimbledon and because um, CBBC used to do live stuff from Wimbledon for three or four days uh, in sort of like the middle of the tournament. And when you're the afternoon presenter, like I was for two years, you get sent. I couldn't give a single flying macro for anything tennis. I'm not fussed. I'm not interested. Not remotely. Neither is Phil, Hacker's manager. And we were sent down to Wimbledon two years in a row together. Both times just kind of like, we'll have fun with the links, but we'll openly reference that we don't know what we're talking about in the links. <laughs> and we did. But I I'm there and, and studio are talking to us from Salford in our earpieces and like, yeah, we're about to go. Oh, Chris, you would have liked this. Um, uh, uh, Bedtime Stories guest in today it was Peter Serafinowicz. You love him, don't you? And I went, <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah, he's only doing the one. He's just in this afternoon. I was like, right i was grumpy for the rest of the evening yeah so it was like one week where i could have met one of my comedy heroes and i'm here <laughs> looking at henman hill <laughs> yeah. I've, talking, I've... talking to a disinterested puppet dog about sue barker Just... what am i doing because <laughs> I've, I've only recently watched uh, the first series of spaced for the first time uh, yes, i yeah. really enjoyed that he's really funny in it as well so good like the the peter serafinowicz show the whole thing is on youtube via his production company yeah so, so the ad revenue goes to him and his production company so if you all want to watch it look it up if you can spell his name um so yeah <laughs> it's amazing yeah sorry that's 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 some behind the scenes nonsense that uh, i've never told anyone no and we'll have to have you all killed now <laughs> The chat, I hope you all signed the NDAs, okay? I sent them all to you in the post. They should have fast-track delivery. They should all be there. But we do have people in the chat asking, like, which doctors would be the best at reading bedtime stories. I want to hear Sylvester McCoy. If we're talking actors, McCoy would smash it. Yeah. He would absolutely smash it. If we're talking doctors, I think because of my rewatch at the minute... The 11th Doctor would be amazing at bedtime stories. Now he just rip out the last page, though, and the producer yes, is just fuming. 
<laughs> yes, he would. And they'd get loads of complaints of like parents going, my child ripped the last page out of Wonky Donkey book. Like, what am I meant to do now? That was my like... first edition of Winnie the Pooh. Hey, you hey, little no punk. Signed it. I, I paid £500 for it at an auction. <laughs> like, oh, don't worry about it. Just go and make a horror film about Winnie the Pooh. It's legal now. Um, so, yeah, but the, the 11th Doctor would be great. I mean, it'd be, it, you'd have to edit the hell out of it because he'd just go off on little tangents or stop to eat a whole, sniff a whole packet of jammy dodgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I, th I think there's no wrong answer for Doctor actors, but Cyberman Elf's right, uh, Paul McGann would be one of the best and you'd get the, the parents would be get, all getting all flustered again. Paul McGann has such a somniferous tone hmm. that that kid would not only be asleep, it would sleep like for 12 full hours and wake up refreshed Meanwhile, mum and dad, or mum and mum, or dad and dad, or older brother, sister, whoever's watching with the kids, she's out there going, oh, Christ. After we've put them to bed, um, do you want to watch With Nail and I? No yeah. reason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to listen to all four box sets of Stranded? <laughs> do you know what? That'll be, that will be... <laughs> Well, the stranded sesh. That will be. Oh, come on, giving me your come hither dark eyes. Um, that will be a rite of passage for shooting out <laughs> ravenous. When she, when, <laughs> raven oh, even better. Uh, <laughs> when 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 shooty gets asked to do a bedtime story, that's when you know it's like we're here. We've officially hit. Shooty Gat was era. Yes. <laughs> like when, when he's in a bedtime story, it's like he's here. There he is. Um, if Colin Baker did them, the kids would be energized and not go to sleep. <laughs> like uh, the bad guy of the book. Villain! Murderer! <laughs> and the memes Just would be endless. Pointing at all the different animals in the Gruffalo. <laughs> yeah. No, oh no. The, okay, so he, he turns up in full Sixth Doctor apparel. It's like, okay, kids, we're not reading Peppa Pig. We're reading a book called uh, Animal Farm. And... <laughs> It's just a eight hours, single take, one take Colin. For the year of Colin Baker, he just reads <laughs> George Orwell's Animal Farm. Unabridged? Yeah, just... unabridged. <laughs> Halfway through, Nicola Bryant runs in, feeling she has to do an American accent. He's just like, Doctor, I'm not sure that's appropriate. Quiet, Perry! Perry, where were you four hours ago when I started? <laughs> I, I didn't know oh, I had that Colin Baker voice in me. Water. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I, if, if, it's a very busy year for him, but if he needs to take five minutes, you can you can stand in just just fill some fill in some Colin vocal for a yeah. bit. And let we all know it. the fate of Gruffalo Spies. You you can be Dolin Baker. Do, I, I am Dolin. Yes, yeah. I am yeah. the, the knockoff BBV version. <laughs> Dolin Baker and his best mate Bez. Yep. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Colin begins. <laughs> oh, but yeah, if yeah, Paul Paul McGann would be a great one as well. I think the 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 boys and the girls and uh, and everything in between, they'd wake up, they'd go to bed, children and wake up adults. Like yeah, they they just they'd be like, I feel like I've been through a religious experience. I'm four, I don't even know what that is, but I feel like I've been through it. Yeah, like um, like nutty <laughs> professor, just wake up the next morning, bam, that's how it goes. Just a remake of Big, yes. <laughs> Yeah. And like, the inciting incident is not some weird fortune teller arcade machine. It is Paul McGann doing bedtime stories. I mean, do you know what? I just want to commission Paul McGann full stop. I just yeah. want to commission Paul McGann. <laughs> Paul <laughs> like, turns like, up. Like he, was, like he was an Etsy contributor. I just want to commission you, Paul. All right. What, what would you like me to make? Yeah. Paul, I want you to stare at me. Can I just look at you, Paul? <laughs> Can I look at you, Paul? Please, Paul. Can I, Paul? It's getting a little bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For you. For you. <laughs> uh. All right. Put the wig on, Paul. Put the wig on. It's just turned it into a sequel to that bloody David Williams and Mark Gay. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Can I, can I kiss Paul McGann? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not saying that a Five Who Fans reboot is on the horizon. I'm not here to make those commitments or those talks, but that's that would be a sketch if that if would that... absolutely. Well, I, do you know what? I'm gonna. I, I feel. I feel now is probably the time. I feel like the audience crossover is strong enough 
Mm. Um, and I, I have checked in with um, with with the council of of five WF. Oh, people ask us, um, when is Five Who fans coming back? Like, come on, you guys can't stay away for long for that long. Surely, the new era will begin. And as we as we look upon the beginning of RTD two and and a whole big refresh for Doctor Who. Um, I feel that now is the perfect time to announce that we're not coming back. Stop asking, seriously, please. Stop asking. We're done. <laughs> Stop. Oh, I've kept that in for so long, I'm so excited to be able to reveal that. <laughs> but now, here's the new Five Who fans. It's the Five Pauls. <laughs> and it's just obviously the five who fans but with paul mcgann masks on like no uh, costume it, attempt it's just phoenix doubled up to be five people dressed as paul mcgann in his full eighth doctor outfit just talking like this the whole time remember phoenix think alarm clocks um phoenix will yeah, be up for that i'm sorry if i let anybody down there with that little 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 jape but you've had like three years to get used to the fact that it's finished so come yeah on, get, exactly. over, get over it yeah get over it <laughs> uh anyway anyway chris this has been a pleasure this is <laughs> this has I, I i i worry for the i worry for the visual effects comparison portion of the show now um oh yeah i've still got to do that haven't i yeah i'm really sorry for <laughs> i've still got to review big finishes water worlds uh it's good there we go i haven't heard it but i'm yeah. assuming it's the, like, year it? mm. the year of colin the year of colin so you know it's got to be good right and you've probably got a bunch of super chats as well i'm just saying uh, my screen was lit up I i'm have sorry for the chat for having to stick around um but if if you'd like to please keep throwing more money at will i would appreciate that mm. he's down he's down there any he, on your screen throw throw money at this man <laughs> yeah. throw money at this man wads of wads of cash from uh, in briefcases throw paul mcgann levels of etsy money at this man what, right, what was that um, what was that jxc video where uh, she was like that you can buy a paul mcgann cardboard cutout and he comes yeah. fully assembled yeah well <laughs> just steps right out how did i get here uh well paul <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of mail order pauls have you ever heard of international shipping welcome to bermuda <laughs> welcome to my collection <laughs> I've got it here. I, yeah, I, I was going to say that's that's the ultimate fate, isn't it? They get shrunk down and put on Chris's shelf, like the beginning of the Five Doctors. Every now and again, I just slide a new actor on there, and the room goes. Yes. <laughs> I just slide them into position, <laughs> and, they, and yet Tom Baker <laughs> refuses to enter this room. And every, everyone on your shelf is currently in the death zone. Everyone, yeah. it's bedlam. Especially the giant Chucky doll over your left shoulder. That's that now that that's the that's the the family friendly Funko version. Yes, there's another version, but it's just out of reach, and I'm not going to get it. No, <laughs> it's much scarier. Instead, um, oh boy, look at this Chris Hemsworth instead. There you go. Oh, <laughs> there he is. I haven't even seen the film yet. This could be a terrible costume and a terrible scene, but it looks pretty. So there he is. Uh, but <laughs> I'm when, 31 and pay taxes. But when when the new Thor movie does come out, Chris, where can everyone hear your thoughts on it? Well, funny you should mention that because I have a pop culture podcast. Well, I did. Big damn cast, 300 episodes over nearly six years. The whole thing's available to listen to on Spotify and Apple Podcasts right now. And in late June returns, Big Dama Pop Culture Podcast will be on the exact same feeds. We will be talking all things Thor, Love and Thunder when it comes out. There's going to be stuff on the YouTube channel too. So look up Big Dam Cast on Google and find all the relevant links. Uh, and I always talk about pop culture nonsense and ridiculousness over on my socials, including my Twitch, all of which are official CDJ. That's official CDJ. Don't accept any unofficial ones because they're made completely of grease and it's part of a conspiracy. Mm. You've dabbled with Chris's now meet the genuine article. Genuine article. <laughs> but the, in the description, yeah, there is a, there is a link to your Twitter and there's a link tree as well uh, to to all of your feeds. Do you know Peter K came in studio once with his kids? Just showed up, just showed up. The, the producer here said, 
Um, we've got a guest uh, just popping in for a moment. Are you okay? Just show him around. Uh, it's Peter K. And then he put the mic off and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Peter K. steps through the door. And what followed was 10 minutes of him being completely amazed at how puppeteering works. Mm. Like, utterly befuddled by it. And it was just the sweetest thing because his kids were just like, wow, so that's the camera. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's the spinning That's the spinning door. And Peter K. is just like, so you lie on that thing and you just have to stay like that for an hour. <laughs> You'd be knackered, wouldn't you? You'd be absolutely knackered. You'd be yeah. shattered. And Phil's there going, no, it's fine. You get used to it. He's like, can I ever go? It's like, absolutely. Get a hacker on his arm now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, uh, he, he seems so down to earth. And yeah, because like, I've worked with him before. And yeah, he's he's he seems like a real stand up guy. Not as down to earth as Ursula, but I'm sure you'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, we even dear. have something of a love life. Right. I I I I set you free. Yes, I can now flutter and fly away. You can, you can fly to your super chats and and pave stones with the face of a ghost woman. Well, and uh, yeah, I will <laughs> need a second me. round of coffee for that one to get me through. But absolutely, give this man a chance to top up his beans, folks. Uh, but no, but Chris, it's been wonderful chatting with you about uh, CBBC and uh, and uh, everything that we've been stunlocked for, and it's been great sharing stories. Uh, it's been lovely. It's been lovely hearing your voice, and uh, I hope to see your face physically soon as well. Take me to France. Yes, we need to. That went because Chris went to my wedding, um, the wedding reception, and yeah, so we, that that idea we came up with. We need to we need to advance that. We do. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. Uh, oh, trade because everyone here will go. Oh, well, that's horrendous. Nope, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tra trade. We're going to trademark that. Okay, but yeah, Chris, have yourself uh, a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you for for spending your evening with with me. Thank you. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> yes. Uh, take care, buddy. Have yourself a great night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ah, yeah. The man's just a cartoon character and i love him for it just give very very huggable as well very huggable uh speaking of hugs and uh, affection so we're going to take a five minute break in a moment first of all if you have not liked the live stream please feel free to do so if we can get over 100 likes that would be absolutely uh, splendid however we need to do a bedtime story and then we're going to do a quick five minute break while i top up my macro mug so for this installment of mr tardis bedtime story uh, we're going to be reading from uh, the classics, uh, Doctor Who the Macra Terror book, uh, and we'll uh, make a start of there. So, novelist and screenwriter Ian Stewart Black first wrote for Doctor Who in the spring of 1966. He contributed two stories, The Savages and The War Machines, broadcast back to back between 19... No, I got it wrong already. I cocked up. See you in five minutes. <laughs> 